Six minutes past six GMT. Welcome to Weekend from the BBC World Service with me, Julian Warwick. With me throughout the programme, John Nielsen Wright, Associate Professor in Modern Japanese Studies at the University of Cambridge and Senior Fellow for Northeast Asia at the London-based research organisation Chatham House, and Ramita Navai, a British-Iranian filmmaker and journalist and author based in London. Now, at the tender age of 16... Haley Taylor Schlitz was accepted into nine different law schools across the United States. She chose Southern Methodist University's Dedman School of Law. Well, three years later, at the age of just 19, she became the youngest ever black law school graduate in America. She's already made a name for herself as an author, public speaker, and respected thought leader on the issues that students of colour face in navigating gifted and talented programmes in public schools. Well, just before we came on air, I spoke to Haley Taylor Schlitz and asked her how she was dealing with all the media interest in her success. I am so proud and very humbled by all of this press. I am just, I'm just, like I said, I'm proud to be part of the class of 2022. I feel very accomplished. I'm proud of how far I've come. Definitely have my uh, sights on studying for the bar and passing it. This is a really big deal for black women with Vice President Kamala Harris being there, doing her thing, and then Judge Katanji Brown Jackson. So I'm just, you know, I'm just humbled to be a part of that. <laughs> What's the story behind it? How come you are the youngest? What have you you been able to do that others haven't? Really, the biggest like turning point in my education is when I was pulled out of public school and I did a college style homeschool. And that really allowed for personalized education. And I was really allowed to go at my own pace in that space. That entailed me graduating high school at 13. So it was really that change of events. It was really crucial. Um, it was definitely what I needed. And now what's the plan? Here you are, the youngest. So what do you do next? I'm going to study for the bar. The bar is July 26 and 27, so I am studying and going to take that. And then afterward, I'm going to go and teach. I feel called to teaching. I want to create an environment in the classroom where students can thrive and be their best selves and build their path and really, really grow into their education. I mean, obviously, this is a fantastic achievement, and that's why we're talking to you. I just wonder, are there any downsides to advancing as quickly as you have, do you think? I think that there would be a downside if this wasn't where I needed to be because everybody is their obviously own individual and we all are at different locations. Even if we're relatively close to each other, we're all at different locations. The public school system doesn't take that into account and moves along whether some students are left behind and moves at its own rate, even if some students are ready to move on and are ahead. And if I was not ready to go at the pace that I have went, then it would have been a very, very harmful and I would have struggled. So it definitely, I think that that wasn't a downfall for me because it's where I needed to be to stay engaged in school. Of course, if you already are done with kindergarten and you're in college, but somebody makes you go back to kindergarten, you're going to be bored out of your mind. But if there's a student out there who's not ready to be put in a higher grade, graduating high school, going to college, going to law school, doing whatever post-grad or higher education that they do or skipping grades is not going to be healthy. Haley Taylor Schlitz, America's youngest ever black law school graduate and alumna of Southern Methodist University in Dallas, Texas. Um, I wonder, Ramita, what you take out of that conversation. Gosh, I mean, what a remarkable, <laughs> inspiring young woman. But I can't help thinking that this does highlight the more limited opportunities for women of colour. You know, Haley was, was homeschooled because ultimately it's more likely that women of colour will be failed by the system and institutions. I wondered if you would highlight that because I was struck by her references to the public school system at least a, a couple of times in that conversation. And that clearly was very significant in, in what's what's happened to her, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's it's in it's, it's in it's it's in it is inescapable. So gosh, sorry, I can't talk at the moment. It's inescapable. Um, and a lot of it has been made in the media of Haley's ethnicity and Haley being black. Would it have been the same if she was white? Uh, it just wouldn't. Mm. John, thoughts? Yeah, having spent one year as a high school student in the United States, I am <laughs> deeply impressed <laughs> um, to see, you know, I thought I was doing well at 16 when I was in high school there in the final year. But um, I, the thing I really take away from what she said is her commitment to teaching mm. uh, and how important that role is, particularly in providing mentoring and role models and to have someone with so much energy and passion 
and the fact that she's um, preparing for the the bar exam, but is still committed to this idea of service and giving something back yeah. of mm. someone that young. I think that is really impressive. Uh, Ramita, I suppose there was a hint in one question I asked about the possible downsides of advancing so quickly. Do, do you think that there are some potential? Potential burnout, potential blazing and reaching your peak too early. But I think, as John said, I mean, Haley sounds so committed when you're committed so young. I wish I was. I mean, John, I was a complete loser when I was 19 years old. So, <laughs> me, <yeah>. too, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. <laughs> That's clearly why we, bo we invited both of you on as panel guests, you know, <laughs> those early years that were so formative. Um, but I mean, you you do some teaching, John, clearly as well. Don't you? I do. And I love it. Um, and um, increasingly, as, as, as I get older and greyer, I realise that that's probably the most valuable part of my job. Uh, especially when you see a 19 year old who's going who's going to go places. Yes. And um, you can have such an impact. And um, the students in turn give you so much as well. My guest today, John Nilsson Wright and Ramita Navai. Plenty more to come from them. In the next hour of the programme, you're listening to Weekend from the BBC World Service. The latest main news headlines are next. <laughs> <laughs>